in Zurichian portable cities. Today I'll take you through the visual presentation to accompany my report on portable cities, a series of artwork created by Chinese artist Yin Zuishan. These were created from 2001 to 2012 and feature representations of cities sculpted um, out of fabric and exhibited in suitcases. Here you can see the very first artwork created, um, which was of the artist's hometown. She used clothes that were her own and clothes donated by her family to create a really, really personal representation of the city of Beijing and the changes that she saw happening in society over that time. Using clothes um, was about elevating the everyday materials that we don't put too much thought into. To represent these cities with the memory of people who wore these clothes, um, the changing over time that the artist saw happening in her own town, but also the effect of globalization on things that were once really familiar. Being able to pack up your clothes into a suitcase was something that the artist experienced a lot in her life and something that became really meaningful to her after leaving China and going out into the broader world. She thought of a suitcase as being the life support container of modern living and found herself in airports all over the world, really just observing people. Reusing these clothes um, that were in the beginning of the project, donated in a really personal way by the artist and by her own family, she thought the clothes held the memory of people in them um, and she wanted to use this memory, embed this memory into representations of the city. That was also, she saw changing really rapidly to accommodate more people living in cities um, as well as more people traveling internationally. This particular project um, is called Vancouver, and this is a few different views of it. This is um, a pretty early one, and you can see how the clothes still look like clothes, and the sculptures don't look like perfect representations of buildings. I think this makes this artwork really personal, really relatable, and, and quite special to draw a connection to a city. Maybe if you are from Vancouver or if you've been there you would recognize this. I don't in particular um, but I can still appreciate it for what it is. I can see the buttons on a shirt um, and I can immediately think of the person who wore that shirt, the person who it used to belong to um, and all of these people who, the massive amounts of people who live in these cities. So. This is how the projects are exhibited together um, and coming out of China where when the artist was younger, um, Yin Zhuxian was really had a hard time exhibiting her art, um, being allowed to have art shows public. Um, she would have them shut down. It was a bit of an underground thing. So for her personally and for Chinese society to change in the way that now everything is so global is really quite huge. So she's mapped out here the different cities that she's been to. She's included the Chinese character of the names of the city and used the yellow string to really draw out the path 
that one might take around the world. The constraints, like I have mentioned a couple of times, were the perspective that the artist started from. Um, wanting to create art and, you know, creating a representation of the city that she personally lived in was really a stepping stone to creating all of these artworks, over 40 portable cities sculptures. Um, of different places around the world. And the thing that she's really exploring is that the, you know, the world is so much smaller these days because people can travel internationally so easy. You really can just pack up your life in a suitcase and go somewhere else. But the other thing she's reflecting on is really like what we choose to keep as a society and what we choose to throw away. So in China, after the Cultural Revolution, a lot of old buildings were demolished to make, new, to make room for new apartment blocks, um, really standard houses that the artist thinks was kind of chipping away at the culture that had been there for a long time. So this perspective did change um, over the artist's life. And obviously 11, 12, 10 years is a long time when you're thinking about the change that's happened in the world from 2001 to 2012. The artist did personally experience an awakening, um, a change in perspective and saw so many more places, met so many more people. And through making these artworks, she was able to understand the cities that she was visiting and open up a dialogue with the people who lived in those cities, kind of through their clothes. This is what I was kind of talking about before. Um, the artist really believed that clothes had a spiritual nature and this is something that she was always trying to get to no matter what city it was no matter what sculpture she's making um, she's using clothes from that city to connect with those people she's also using the construction of a city the landscape um, the the landmarks the recognizable buildings as well as the different textures and colors and types of fabric to reflect that city. She was also in 2001, um, really early to start using recycled materials and start trying to have this dialogue with a really wide audience as a contemporary artist. So she's not using new things. She's really making a comment and I think this one is especially relevant, New York. Um, New York is such a packed city. And this suitcase, especially compared to some of her other works, is just absolutely jam-packed. Um, there's so much difference within this. And, you know, it looks, it looks tight. It looks claustrophobic. Um, it also looks like there's a lot to do and lots of busy people. Uh, through the reading, I think the artist felt the same way as this, um, she made the same kind of comment about globalization, about China and about the, you know, the country and the places and the people that she knows best. And she said the greeting in China used to be, are you hungry? And these days, as time went on, the greeting was, are you busy? The most common greeting. So she's reflecting on the process of like, are we so busy that, we're not allowed to eat well. Um, so the growing nature of society, I think, and the artist talking about, even asking the question of what do we keep as a society? What do we throw away? What do we let ourselves change into? And what do we let our cities look like?
I think this art has a really hopeful and optimistic nature. It's really human. Um, it's really easy to connect with because the materials, even though you can't recognize some of them as closed anymore, are so familiar to everyone. This tactile function of buttons on a shirt, sleeves and woven fabrics and things like this. Here you can see a little boot because this one is Melbourne. Um, her main message was that artists have the power to act. Artists have the power to ask these questions of people. What do we keep? Where are we going? And what do we want our world to look like? So this is Melbourne again, um, and I just kind of wanted to talk quickly about some of my more favorite of her pieces. Um, and I think this one, even though it's not the most exciting sculpture, I mean, a lot of the colors in here are gray, um, you know, there's some really, really beautiful works, but this one I connected with the most because I recognize it. Um, and I think that's what Yin is trying to get to. She is trying to make this recognizable representation of a city so that viewers can, can really connect with it and connect with these questions about what do we value as a material? What do we discard? What do we get rid of? Um, and recognizing buildings, I think, really does that for a viewer. So these um, are a couple of my other favorites. Um, the one in of San Francisco in particular, I think um, leaving the borders of the suitcase is a really quite an exciting thing. Um, and even though this is an early sculpture and you can tell that some of the later ones are much more intricate, much more detailed as of course her, you know, technical skill with building these tiny sculptures out of old clothes um, grew. You can really tell that she's, you know, she's always using her imagination. She's always pushing these boundaries. Um, and the bridge is so beautiful in its fragility. And I think, um, so it's, it's San Francisco, um, and that's the Golden Gate Bridge. And the fog um, is my favorite thing about it. So the, the cloud of fog, obviously there's, there's more of the city that you probably should be able to see. And then the bridge is surrounded by water. But the experience of being in San Francisco, sometimes it is just so foggy that you can't even see the bridge from the city. Um, and I've definitely had that experience. So I think this one is really like, it's almost like a bit of humor, but it's very, very human to say that, you know, this is what it's like to be in San Francisco, um, you know, and to make that representation with materials that came from this place that we're putting in a suitcase um, is, is really, really lovely. That's all I have. Thank you.